Hello guys, what is up, it's Mace. Welcome back to Blazed and Glazed. So today's video has been a long ass time in the making. It is 100% like my number one requested video ever since I started my channel. And I've always wanted to make it, but just really haven't had the time to sit down and compile the list. But seeing as I've had a little bit more time on my hands than I'm used to, I compiled said list and today I'm going to be walking and talking and shimmying through my favorite movies for fashion inspiration with you guys. So this isn't a list of like my number one favorite movies of all time, although like pretty much every single movie on this list is one of my favorite movies of all time because I am someone who gets so inspired by the wardrobe choices in movies, the costume design, the styling. It's kind of the number one element of a film that really transports me like into that time Time. And being someone whose main inspirations in life come from fashion and film, every time I'm really putting a look together, I always have like wardrobes and themes from movies that I love so dearly in the back of my head. And as you guys have been watching my channel for a while now know, these movies definitely play a large hand in my selections when I'm like going on thrift trips and making thrifting videos for you guys. So if you are new to my channel, I make a ton of videos around thrifting, secondhand style, fashion, being your damn self, celebrating yourself, getting your shimmy on, getting your sparkle on. So if that sounds like a fab ass time to you hit subscribe down below buckle in grab a bev i'm having an espresso but feel free to have a cocktail have water have, have whatever you will have so I'm gonna walk you guys through these films in like a semi order, starting with kind of the 90s, early 2000s, because for me, someone that was born in 92, those movies really stick out when I think of what has really influenced my style as I've grown up. And then we're gonna kind of walk through the films that take us back in time from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and then there will be some honorable mentions at the end. So without further ado, we are going to dive right in. And let me just say, please do not get mad at me if one of your favorite fashion films is not on this list. This is just my personal inspiration list. So if I leave out one of your faves, just leave it in the comments down below so we can all you know get our watch on I feel like the comments are just gonna be like a mass amount of fabulous movie recommendations so we are starting off first with the Spice Girls Spice World it is the number one movie that comes to mind when I think of the first movie that I saw that made me want to get dressed that made me want to dress up that made me honestly just want to be Sporty Spice we had our four gals with their four different styles and to me Sporty Spice was my girl comment down below and let me know which Spice Girl you were I mean I had a Spice Girl birthday party I lived and breathed and died for the damn Spice Girls and that walks us right into the next movie being Josie and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats, kind of a similar vibe. I also had a Josie and the Pussycats themed birthday party when I was younger, but it was just their stand out cool. Like I'm a punk rock prom queen, girl power to the absolute max. That's really what Spice World and Josie and the Pussycats delivered to me as a young girl, as a girl born in 92. Clueless was my everything. Cher Horowitz was my everything. Dion was everything. Ty was everything. Dion specifically very much so went there and I feel like her character since Cher was kind of the star of the film got overlooked when it came to her style because Dion seriously rocked it. She pushed the barrier, she did her thing. Not only did the film bring some of my like favorite fashion moments, but some of my favorite fashion lines. This is an Alaya. An a what -a? It's like a totally important designer. And it also made us all feel like it was kind of okay to date our stepbrothers somehow. Okay, now let's talk Romeo and Michelle, probably one of the most iconic movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Again, another one that I feel like everyone would declare quite a fashion film. Even though it's such gaudy and crazy out there fashion, it's truly just Romeo and Michelle being themselves to the absolute max, and there's nothing I've ever loved seeing presented through clothing in a film more. Do you have some sort of businesswoman special? View from the Top, which is one that I almost left off this list, but when I think back to it, Gwyneth Paltrow, every single outfit she wore on the plane, off the plane making out with Mark Ruffalo, truly, truly iconic. If you have been watching my channel for even maybe a week, you would know that Night at the Roxbury, probably one of my favorite movies of all time, but the Budabi brothers, they embodied that like 90s gaudy club, like we are just sexy and we are just out here on the town vibe. Like that's truly all I get when I watch that. Like I don't even think they were supposed to be like fashion legends, but to me they are basically as important in fashion as Karl Lagerfeld himself. And I've always quite wondered what would happen if Doug and Steve ran into Romeo and Michelle like, I feel like that would just be like a double marriage made in heaven. Every single Mary Kate and Ashley movie ever. Truly from Billboard Dad to Our Lips Are Sealed to Passport to Paris to New York Minute, those twins delivered us the vibes and 90s girls everywhere will be bowing down for the rest of our lives. Speaking of it girls of that time, Lindsay Lohan, she just did the damn thing. I mean, from Parent Trap, I mean, honestly, I feel like I'm in like a very Meredith Blake inspired outfit today. Uh, Parent Trap to get a clue to Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, which I literally have been trying to convince my boyfriend Tyler to watch our whole entire like eight year relationship and he still hasn't. It's happening during this quarantine to 
Freaky Friday. I mean, I literally put a blonde solid streak in my hair just because of Lindsay Lohan's character in Freaky Friday. The Lizzie McGuire movie, which in my opinion, the most like iconic fashion scenes of that movie specifically was when she's like, you know, being Isabella and she's trying on all the different outfits at Franca Tukamaka de Takinis or Tukamaka de Takini. The igloo dress, iconic. Bringing back to Miss Lindsay Lohan for a second with Mean Girls. I mean, Mean Girls, mini skirts, tank tops that had words on them. I feel like that was such a big thing in the 2000s, which the 2000s were a questionable time in fashion. Not quite the early 2000s, but more the mid 2000s. They were scary, they were dark, they were a little bit wild in not the best way, but Mean Girls definitely did the damn thing with placing the trend of one, like on Wednesdays We Were Pink, and two, uh, the graphic tank tops. The graphic tank tops that said like, I am a hot bitch, like touch my booty, let's party. Moving on to those feel good, kind of more like girly fashion films in my opinions from that time. So that would be like our 13 going on 30. I remember watching that movie and then going straight to the mall to like wanna buy pretty colors and like florals to dance around in. Same with Uptown Girls, Brittany Murphy. Oh my God, Brittany Murphy's just like carefree spirit and like attitude and vibe and the way that she dressed in that movie, I loved so much. As well as Dakota Fanning's like little Upper East Side posh girl vibe, we love. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days doesn't necessarily have like groundbreaking wardrobe, but it also just gives me really great fashion vibe vibes because they're like working at Composure, they're at a fashion magazine, and also we can like not not talk about Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey and their little Chinese crusted dogs like matching plaid family outfits. A look. Speaking of Miss Kate Hudson, almost famous, obviously. Kate Hudson's like breakout role, but also like totally, totally embodied that groupy fashion like aesthetic, like so, so, so well. Another freaking blonde bombshell who rocks it out of the park with her outfits. Miss Reese Witherspoon, Elle Woods herself, legally blonde, pink, 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 girl power, girl power, yas, yas, yas. There was like quite a long time in my preteen life where I wanted to find like a teal, like robe, like lawyer esque thing that I could wear on my first day of law school that I was never going to go to, a la Elle Woods. And we can't talk about Reese Witherspoon without mentioning Cruel Intentions, which her outfits were pretty good in that movie for more of like a soft vibe. And since I cannot include Buffy the Vampire Slayer on this list because it is television, Sarah Michelle Gellar's character in Cruel Intentions, the lingerie that she dresses up, so hot, so good, is so reminiscent of so many pieces I've seen come back in style over time. Bedazzled. I feel like Bedazzled is one of the most like underrated movie of all time. Elizabeth Hurley, fashion icon. Brendan Fraser, not quite fashion icon, but she, as the devil in Bedazzled, absolutely everything. She basically changes outfits so many times throughout the film and looks incredibly amazing the entire time. Going from one badass queen movie to the next, Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels. Cameron, Lucy, and Drew all of their outfits. I always think of like the bikini that Cameron Diaz is in when she's like on the boat, the gold one looking oh so fabulous. Whenever I put on a black pair of latex pants, I truly feel like I am going to kick some ass a la Charlie's Angels, so could not leave them off the list. Coyote ugly, coyote ugly. I thrifted this Hooters tank top that when I did pair it with my also thrifted latex pants, I feel like I could go and get up and dance on the bar. Absolutely yes, incredibly here for it. Now walking it into our kind of like teen films, which I love of a good 90s teen film. It's probably one of my favorite film genres in general and what I feel like a lot of people are getting their fashion inspiration from right now. The first film that I think of right away is Can't Hardly Wait, which again, I feel like is kind of underrated and doesn't get enough play. Jennifer Love Hewitt in that looks amazing, but it's kind of like the beauty of a 90s, early 2000s teen movie is that there's a party, there's a school, like there's so many people wearing so many different kinds of looks that I feel like anyone can relate to and get inspired by. So when I think of Can't Hardly Wait, it's kind of one of those movies where every character has one outfit on for basically the entire film because it's just like a one night party party scene, but Jennifer Love Hewitt looks amazing. Never Been Kissed, where the definite standouts in that movie for me are the trio of the three girls that are like the popular girls. Jessica Alba is like the only one that I know the name of of those three. They looked phenomenal throughout the entire film, but like the standout vibe to me is when they are at the prom at the end as the Barbies. Totally ripped off my Malibu Barbie idea. Uh huh. I'm Disco Barbie. Yeah, I've wanted to be Disco Barbie ever since. Jawbreaker, just a damn Cardi party. When I think of Jawbreaker, I think Cardigan Fiesta to the max. I feel like Jawbreaker is inspiring so many of the looks that I see girls on Instagram wearing right now and a ton, a ton of the little like cutesy cutesy cardigans that I've thrifted over the past couple months have been so inspired by Rose McGowan. Like she was such a legend in that movie and the fashion from that movie just will never die. And then to kind of round out my nostalgia picks, I have the hot chick. Again, like just those amazing, colorful 90s fun vibes. She's all that, Lainey Boggs before and after. I honestly like her before vibe and I like her after 
Dr. Vibe, and I love Freddie Prince Jr., always. 13, because, oh my God, it made me want to be just like a dark ass bitch. It's gonna go shopping on Melrose and like get my belly button pierced and like wear a black crop top and yell at my mom. Like that movie literally changed my life. Like it changed my life and the fashion was so like gritty and dark and amazing. Just so good, Evie Zamora, like another icon. And then two of my favorite like grungier teen movie picks, 10 Things I Hate About You, where everyone kind of has their own style going on, but again, just very teen, very fun. And Empire Records. Empire Records, Liv Tyler. I mean, I love Liv Tyler so much. She always looks so iconic in everything, but Empire Records, I feel like is a great depiction of like, kids style at that time. Kind of that like grungy cool, we work in a record shop vibe and I feel like it's a very like realistic depiction of like I said, like what kids were wearing at that time. Now walking it back a little bit further to movies that don't necessarily give me nostalgia because I might not have lived through these times, but that I love so much. So the first movie to my head, my favorite movie of all time, Grease. So even though Grease was made in the 1970s, it was set to be in 1959. So it definitely had that like poodle skirt, early 60s vibe to the girls clothing which I wasn't the most inspired by, but I died for a greaser fit, a leather jacket, so good. All of the like John Hughes Brat Pack movies, but more specifically Pretty in Pink, because that movie was like based kind of around fashion, like Andy like was making her clothes, very floral, very cool. I was most inspired by Ducky's style in that specific movie. The Breakfast Club was a really cool one because it was one of those movies where like, you kind of know a lot about the character based on what they're wearing. You know what I mean? Like Emilio Estevez, we have him in more of a sporty getup because we're to know that he's the athlete and like Ali Sheedy's and like the black kind of oversized cardigans because we're supposed to, you know, she's like the loner. I love when a movie tells us so much about a character like based on what they're wearing. That Thing You Do, made in 96, but set in 1964. So it's got those very classic 60s silhouettes and styles. And I feel like Liv Tyler is a standout fashion goddess in that movie that again, I feel like it is underrated. I love the kind of like guys playing their music together in their outfits in that time. Um, very cute, very cute. And speaking of movies that were made more recently, but set back in the day, Rocket Man, which took us through all of Elton John's like iconic looks throughout all of his performances, as well as Bohemian Rhapsody, which did the same thing for us with Freddie Mercury. When I saw Bohemian Rhapsody, it was such a reminder of just the iconic looks that Freddie Mercury pulled throughout the 60s and 70s and 80s. Much like Elton, his style really evolved and changed. Oh, those two men just have my heart when it comes to fashion. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which also came out recently and really, really brought us back to Hollywood in 1969. Very carefree style, very walking around barefoot, very, I'm gonna follow freaking Charles Manson. Brad Pitt playing Cliff Booth, absolutely. He really, really encapsulated like that early 70s, end of the 60s vibe. Very sexy, sexy. I feel like all the men in that movie looked very sexy, sexy. Speaking of sexy, sexy, Saturday Night Fever is obviously a huge one because it really has those disco elements to it. Mahogany, I don't know if a lot of you guys have seen Mahogany, but Miss Diana Ross kills kills, kills, kills in Mahogany. I just want a fictitious closet in a fictitious land for me to just dance around in everything she wears in that movie. And I feel quite the same about Casino where Sharon Stone really brings it in every single fit throughout the film, much like Michelle Pfeiffer in Scarface. Truly, she's a slip dress icon, a slip dress queen. Anytime I see like a jewel toned, hot, sexy little slinky number, I think of her. Back to the 70s with Dazed and Confused, which when I think about Matthew McConaughey in that movie, yes, yes. Just classic, fantastic, kind of like 70s teen style, super casual, super cool, and also what I feel like is super in style right now at the moment, Black Klansmen. Not really like a notable fashion film, but they did 70s style so well and crisp in that movie that I had to include it on this list. Entering the 80s, maybe my favorite decade in fashion ever, which we are gonna start with The Wedding Singer, which was of course made in 1998, but it was set in 1985, and it just has the most out there, crazy clothing. Every time I watch it, I feel bursts of inspiration. Same with The Heathers. The Heathers was interesting because every single character kind of had a color they were assigned throughout the film that kind of like described who they were and their personality in the group. I actually thrifted a blazer that was in the kind of emerald green that reminds me so much of Sharon Doherty's character. Some more like super iconic 80s teen movies, which don't have any like standout fancy outfits, but are more just like what kids were wearing in the 80s, which I find also super 
inspirational. Say Anything, starring the fabulous John Cusack. Can't Buy Me Love, probably one of Patrick Dempsey's first roles, but him as Donald, like, he wears outrageous things, kind of close to Ducky and Pretty in Pink kind of vibes, just a guy doing his own thing, kind of being out there, being himself. That was such a theme of that movie, and I love that so much. Summer School, another, in my opinion, kind of underrated movie, but again, just like a class of kids in the 80s that are all kind of channeling their own aesthetics and vibes. When Harry Met Sally, which I feel like, again, doesn't really stand out as like a fashion film, but I just really appreciate the simple, simple things they wore throughout the film. There are certain scenes where Meg Ryan and Billy Crystal are just like sitting together where I'm just like, damn, those fits are fire. Like those fits are simple, but those fits are fire. And they're also fits that can be very, very closely recreated at the thrift store. Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. I literally thrifted a blazer at the Goodwill bins a couple of months back that I literally grabbed and thought of Sue Ellen right away. It was kind of the end of the 80s, early 90s. I think it was made in 91. And part of the movie is kind of like the grungy kids at home, like the grungy, like early 90s feel. Her brother in the movie has like a very cool aesthetic of his own. But then when she goes to like work at the office and like pretend to like not be 17 years old, she's wearing just these amazing, like kind of jewel tone 80s, early 90s blazers that I go Radio Gaga for. And I obviously could not not mention a pretty woman. I feel like I just have to give Julia Roberts like a notable shout out because she really, really pulled some fire looks back in the day. To me, she really was like the essence of like that gorgeous classic 90s beauty. Her hair, yas. Pretty woman, yas. Notting Hill when she's like walking around the bookstore and like meets Hugh Grant for the first time, that look, fire. And to me, Julia Roberts, like I know she's played some super feminine roles, but her in like Aaron Brockovich and in like My Best Friend's Wedding, where she's playing characters that are like a little bit less feminine. I feel like that was really telling women at that time, like you can be beautiful, you can be amazing, you can be literally the highest paid woman in Hollywood because she literally was at that time and you don't have to dress super feminine. I feel like at least to me, she made pantsuits sexy sexy. To round out our list, I have two honorable mentions that couldn't really fit into any of these categories because they are two of like the most recent films that I have seen, one being Uncut Gems. I will leave a Vogue article linked down below that talks all about this. I think it was called like the Beauty and Schmuck style and truly like the jewelry, the tops that Adam Sandler wears in that movie. Yes, they remind me of so many shimmy shake tops that I buy at the thrift store myself. And then Queen and Slim. Now they don't really change outfits too much throughout the movie, but I feel like, again, like I said earlier, movies where they don't have as many looks to work with, they really hone in on what those looks are and how to kind of like project who the character is through the look. And the stylist that worked on that movie, I follow her on Instagram, I do not want to butcher her name, but she is absolutely amazing. And I like remember when I saw that she was styling Queen and Slim and I was like not even surprised at all because I knew she would freaking bring it and kill it and she did. Whew, that is the end of the list. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what is your favorite fashion movie for inspiration, whether it was on the list, whether it wasn't on the list. Also comment down below letting me know if you guys would want me to do this with TV shows because again, this was just film and there are so many standout TV shows. I hope that this video gave you guys some inspiration for some movies that you can add to your quarantine movie watching list. I promise not only are these all fashion inspiration movies, they're all just fabulous films in general, in my opinion. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram at Macy Eleni for more of my daily looks. I love you guys so much. Do not forget that you're a beautiful ass queen, no matter what, doing your damn thing just the way you do. And I will see you guys back here on Friday. Go watch some movies. Peace. Peace, love and chubby. <laughs>